the number one reason why you're getting I am not interested from your prospects is because, well, I'm going to tell you in this episode, but before that, I want to tell you a story as well about a video that I watched, actually a movie that I saw this weekend with my family. And as a good sales rep and as a sales trainer and somebody that writes and produces content, I saw this and I thought, oh my goodness, this is the perfect scenario to illustrate the example of why most sales reps are getting, I'm not interested. I hope this makes sense to you. I hope you can apply it and I hope you see the difference as well. You're gonna love this, I promise you. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast here on TSC TV. I'm your host, your coach, your mentor, your guide down the sales journey, Mr. Donald C. Kelly, the sales evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And we're going to talk to you about the number one reason I feel why you're getting I'm not interested. This is based on information that I've seen working with hundreds of sales reps, coaching individuals, training organizations, and also being a sales rep making hundreds and thousands of phone calls. And I've gotten that. I've gotten it in my career. And I can tell you oftentimes the reason why ties back to this particular example. But I also mentioned at the beginning of this episode that we're going to talk about this video, this this. There's a movie that I saw this weekend. It's Tiana and the Frog. I'm not sure if you've seen it on the, the Disney movie, but takes place down in a bayou in Louisiana. And Tiana, she has this dream of creating this amazing restaurant that she did with her, this dream she had with her dad. She wants to accomplish this and wants to do something with, with life and, and have this purpose. So she finds herself in an interesting situation where she eventually, I won't give you all, all the way, but she found herself being turned into a frog. Yes, a ribbit, 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 a frog. And she is in the bayou and there's this other guy that's a prince and he's also a frog as well. And their quest is to get to this voodoo witch lady who can help them give them the proper remedy or the guidance on how they can overcome this curse and to actually turn back into human beings and go from there. While they're down there, however, in the bayou, they came across this alligator. And this alligator is amazing at playing the trumpet. And they asked this alligator, well, the prince, the, the guy, he went to this alligator and asked the alligator, hey, can you help us out? We're trying to become humans. And then he told them all of this wonderful things, like, who do I need to get in touch with? You know, we heard about this lady down here. And they said, yeah, you need to go and find Miss Madam so-and-so. And And she is the witch doctor, and she can help you out. They then realized they didn't know how to get there, and they didn't know who this person was. But this alligator sure did. So the the Tiana asked this alligator, can you go with us and can you show us the way? The alligator's like, to the witch doctor? Oh, heck no, I'm not going anywhere. And promptly turned them down and said, no, thank you, not at all. Went back to playing his trumpet. The slick and sly Mr. The Prince, who is this frog, he realized that what they did was not right. They went forward and they asked this alligator but they didn't, they missed, they messed up on their pitch. So what he decided to do was to flip it around. He said, watch this. He went back to the alligator and said, Mr. Alligator, what is one of the biggest struggles you're facing with right now? Essentially. And the alligator, he loves playing a trumpet, but whenever he goes to play in front of human beings, naturally human beings see him as a threat and they do not want to listen to him. So he said, hey, if there's a way that you could play your trumpet in front of crowds and hear people all around and people all around hear you and see your amazing talents, would you be interested in that? Mr. Alligator said, yes. He said, okay, well, well, maybe, I don't know, maybe you can, you can get this dream as well by coming with us and actually becoming a human and play in front of crowds. The alligator didn't put two and two together, but this sales rep, this prince of a frog, put it together and told the alligator what he wanted the most. I push push this idea so much with our podcast, the platinum rule. Treat others the way that they would like to be treated. Tell others the way, tell others things that they would like, not things that you would like or you think that they would like. We want to give them what they want. 
With Tiana, she explained to the frog that she needed some help and that the benefits to her becoming a human being and if he could help him, help them. There was nothing in it for the alligator besides doing a goodwill, but he rather plays trumpet. However, when they were able to flip it and they were able to focus on what the alligator wanted and gave him what he desired or an opportunity to get what he desired, he was more obli- more willing to oblige with them and to guide them on the path. The story goes on, but I won't give you the rest. I'm sure you can figure out it's a Disney movie. The point I'm making, when I saw that, I realized the issue that we all make. It tied back to many of my examples. When I reached out as a sales rep, as an account executive, reaching out to prospect, a lot of times I led with me, me, my, I, and about everything about my company. Hi, we've been with the ground for XYZ years. We do so-and-so. We want to do this. I would love to set up a time to talk to you. Not interested. There is nothing in it for the buyer. And I know this principle sounds plain and simple, but what if you were able to flip that and go to your prospect, figure out what they want the most? And one of the easiest ways you can figure this out is search your job title and go on LinkedIn and search your job title and you can see job offerings for that or go to Indeed.com. I've given this example many times, but imagine if you go to Indeed for marketing director, what is it going to say one of the top responsibilities for marketing director? Duh, it's to get traffic to come into the web to the company, it's to get inbound leads, it's to bring people that the sales reps can actually talk to or people that would be interested in buying. Your job is to drum up traffic and bring them to us. Now, if I go to a marketing director and I start talking about my company and how long we've been around and how we are amazing at building websites and how we have you know, been mentioned in JD Power and Associates and, and all of these things, what does that have to do with the buyer? They're listening to me in a matter of 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and I go ahead and do my pitch. And the first thing I'm going to say, you know, Donald, I'm busy right now. I'm not interested. We have somebody to take care of our websites. Bye. But if I'm able to ask this person, you know, bring, we like to call a point of reference. You can refer back to one of our past episodes. So we like to connect with a prospect on LinkedIn, use the omni-channel approach. And then now when we do the actual phone call or a video outreach or an email, we can reference to that. Hey, Mike, we connected on LinkedIn last week. We connected on LinkedIn two months ago. Hey, we connected on LinkedIn a little bit, you know, whatever it might, whatever that, that time reference is. Automatically, they're like, okay, well, this person is not an enemy. They're, so to speak, they're not a foe. They're not a threat. Well, what can I do for you? How can I help you out, Donald? Well, I was looking at your website and I just had a quick question. Do you feel comfortable? Do you feel confident you guys are getting a maximum amount of potential leads right now coming into your website? He's going to humor me because we have this connection already. And he's going to say, um, um, no, I don't think anybody is. Well, I was looking over what you're doing. If there is a way that I could show you how you can get 10, 15% more leads coming into your website to help drum up more traffic, would you be open to hearing what we can do for you? I open a story loop, and then he's going to say, yeah, well, what can I do? Then I'm going to go into asking some of my qualifying questions that I might have in my company. Well, before I do that, tell me right now, how much leads are you guys getting right now from your website? How much traffic's coming in per month? Where, you know, where, where do most of your traffic come from? Now that I'm hearing this, and he might say, well, yeah, a lot of it is coming from here. And if, I'm a, if I do SEO and all of that, and I, and I can point out and look at their data on their website, and I can share with them, you might say, well, what do you think the biggest problem is right now that you're not getting most, uh, getting more leads? He might say, well, it's simple. We're just not, we need more traffic coming to the website. But what if I'm able to say, well, I recognize you're getting a decent amount of traffic based on what you're saying. You just, it seems like it's more of a conversion issue at this point and what you're giving them is not of effect. Could I show you something else that could help with that? At this point, I got his attention because I gave him something that he want. I opened a story loop by saying, you know, if I can tell you more about this, and I started asking those questions, and he's engaged, he's intrigued right now. If, even, if, even if it's not a good time, I at least grab his attention that I could start give him the, the appetizer, and then I can set up that next appointment. I can go a little bit deeper with that. The old way of doing things is for me to get up there and do a pitch. We do amazing websites and we can help you to grow your business and to be very, very successful. It's a sales pitch. I'm not interested, Donald. We've been around for 25 years. We're amazing. We can do this. We've helped many organizations. I'm not interested, Donald. But if I speak directly to what they want, an issue that they have, a, a KPI that matters to them, it's gonna, it's gonna work. It often works way, way better than you just trying to pitch and say, I need you to help me to become a better success. I need you to help me to, to have a, a, a bigger uh, pocketbook. I need you to help me to hit my quota, essentially. That's what sales reps say when they come across. 
Focus on what the buyer want. Use your question and skills. Tease them with those questions. And you might say, well, Donald, it sounds so deceptive. It's deceptive if it doesn't work, if, it's not, if you can't bring value to them, if you're trying to con them, if you kind of trick them. But if I'm trying to grab your attention and to solve a problem, there's no deception in that at all. And that's the reason why I feel that so often, going back to the frog, that we don't try to ask people. Do We don't try to give people what they want. We think we're too good and we think if we... If we do that, if we just tell them what they want to hear, then we're being not genuine. If that's what they want and you can deliver it, that is genuine. Give it to them. For me, it's sales. So companies that we get in contact with, sometimes we find out that their LinkedIn, well, sucks. Or they, they, their approach to reach out to prospects not working. So we use the same idea. We ask the question. We connect with them on social. We ask the question. They say, yeah, we feel we can do better. And then naturally, they're going to say, I learned this from one of my good friends, Craig. I was part of his, his conference. And one of the things that he points out when he talks to them, use the same approach, is that they'll tell you uh, closing is their major problem. Most executives, most VPs, most sales managers say the sales rep just doesn't close. They don't close too well. But in actuality, it's usually not a close. It's usually something around prospecting. It's usually around the quality or the, the deeper discussion. We believe in our organization that the close begin in the deeper discussion. If a sales rep is not doing a great deeper discussion, then it, it doesn't matter when you get to the close. You have to start closing there. You have to bring value there. So now fast forward. If I'm able to then point out to them that it's not a, pros- a sales problem, I mean, excuse me, a closing problem, but it's actually something dealing with your prospecting and your deeper discussion and you're not converting most, enough people there, would you be willing to hear how we are doing this for XYZ? Now that person is going to be interested because their job depends all on sales and all on their sales rep performing to their max level. Give the prospect what they want. Use that in your message. It is simple. We got it from a Disney movie. And it is riddled throughout society. Look throughout. As you're watching TV tonight, you're going to see the same thing. As you're watch, listening to, to audio or, or, you know, hear infomercials or, you know, most of you skip over ads. But if, you're, if you get a chance to see any of those, if you go past the restaurant, you see that the billboard, they're focusing on you. We have the biggest burger that can, you know, the, the, the most tastiest burger. You don't have to waste a lot of your money to buy two burgers. You can get it all in one things that I want. I want to get a nice burger that I can eat real quickly. If you go back to McDonald's, have it your way. What is my way? It's the way I interpret it. I like to have my fries and I want to have my biggie size. So that's the case. Or maybe it's Chipotle. I go to Chipotle and then make it the way that I want it. They don't just say, here's a customer burrito. Go ahead and take that. It's a simple principle. Use it. Try it. I promise you, you're going to have more effective appointments. I promise you, when you personalize that message as well, it's going to go skyrocket out of the roof and you're going to get, you're going to get less. <laughs> I'm running over my words here because I'm just so passionate about this. You're going to get less. I'm not interested. Test it out. I want you to su- succeed. I want you to, to be wildly, wild, wildly successful. I want you to be able to, to close deals left and right. I want you to be able to have great appointments with your prospects. This is why we're creating this, and this is why we partner with companies like the, the folks over at Crumble, because it's a powerful tool that helps sales rep not worry about the technical stuff, but they can focus on the things that they do best, which is to help bring people into the organization and help them see value in what you have. You can keep track of that information, easy to use CRM, and it's free to start off with. And I want you to check it out. Go to Crumble. I even have a a tag here I want to show you. They gave me these stickers, and they're really cool. And if you go ahead and connect with me on LinkedIn, and I'll go ahead and uh, send you one of these stickers. They're fun. Nice. Crumble. Find it. the details down below, crmble.com slash TSE. That's crmble.com slash TSE. And if this is your first time watching one of our videos, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit that chime and we'll notify you every single time we produce an episode. I want you to succeed. I want you to find more of those ideal customers. I want you to know what to say when you actually speak with them. I want you to be able to close more deals. But most importantly, I want to challenge you each and every single day to go out and do big things. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video today. If you enjoyed the content, I ask you to go ahead and hit that like button, that thumbs up at the bottom right hand corner. Also, to make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. This way, we'll keep you up to date with all the latest sales strategies, latest tools, and things that are going to help you to not only find more prospects, but to close more deals. Thanks so much.